we're, we're building toward the final finale, and I'm so excited that we have one of our dear sisters who I am, I'm just so happy to know, and, and yet I feel like I barely, it's one of those situations where you feel like you know someone totally, and yet you barely know them in form. You, have you ever experienced that before? Like you know their soul, you know who they are. And, and I'm so grateful that we have Francis Zhu, who is here, who is one of David and Living Miracles' closest compatriots, and just a shining, an enormous, amazing, bright light under herself. So let's welcome Francis Zhu. Thank you everyone for having me and, and I feel so honored to actually be standing here on Easter Sunday and be able to deliver this message because growing, growing up in China, I really, I know nothing about Easter or Jesus Christ. Actually, I only found out about a few days ago, a friend told me that Easter is always on Sunday. Just remember that. <laughs> oh, okay, good, no. <laughs> so, knowing very little about the historic, historical story of, of Jesus, the person, you know, what happened to me is some profound transformation that there is a huge shift in awareness that I didn't really anticipate that would happen to me. When I first met David Hoffmeister, that I think it was about seven years ago, and before I actually met him for, uh, in person, I was listening to him on YouTube for about a year. And I had accumulated a very, very long list of questions, metaphysical questions. So there was this retreat, and I booked a one-on-one -on -one with him. And the one-on-one -on -one was scheduled to be 20 minutes. So I sat in front of him, and I just couldn't stop myself. I cried for 18 minutes. <laughs> With my long list of questions to go through, I couldn't stop myself from bawling in front of him, not able to say a single word. Then, when I finally managed to stop myself, I thought I have to ask, if I only had one question, I had to ask the most important question of this list. And, you know, being someone who was extremely analytical, and I just zoom everything down to one question and this question is how do I know that I'm not this body for real because I know there are relationship issues that I was going through I, I know I had a lot of physical symptoms a lot of physical pain suffering all this financial insecurity that I was experiencing, fear of death, and you know, all of the, the, the problems, but I was tired of trying to find an answer to answer one by one. I wanted to come to the bottom of it all, find a master switch, because A Cross in Miracle promised that there is a master switch, and you can find and you can flip and that can end it all. So if I use my best, my time in the best way, I want to ask David, how do I find the master switch and actually know it for real? I don't want to hear, you know, the metaphysics, which I, you know, I, I read it all and I resonate with them, but I want to live it. So that was my question. How do I know in experience and for real that I am not this body because that will end all the problems which are all related to body identification. And he said, well, if that is the question that you have, that I would, I would spend the rest of my life finding the answer. 
And I thought, I really hope there is a quicker way. <laughs> I really hope you could just tell me now. <laughs> so that was the end of the 101. <laughs> But what happened after that moment was, you know, looking back, fast forwarding um, seven years from that moment to now, <coughs> I really devoted my life th from that moment on to find out that answer and live that answer for myself. You know, what was disappointing, if anything, in that moment was this idea, if I was to spend the rest of my life finding it, then I would spend a lot of time hoping to reach the goal at the end. That was what was going on in my mind. Okay, it's a long journey to reach an end. And hopefully, this is the end I was looking for. But really what happened was from that moment when I give my life over to find that answer, the journey becomes instant. When I start to accept the means and give my life totally to that purpose, I find the end in that moment. And it becomes every moment is to devote my life fully to that answer, to that experience, and experience that every moment. It is ceased to be a future goal. So, I remember, you know, years later, I listened to one of David's earlier talks, and he said um, when he was in university, people used to say to him, go find a life. Um, and he asked, what is life? And, he's, and uh, the answer that he, he was given was, you know, find a relationship, get a job, get into debt, um, mortgage, buy a home, and uh, get married, get sick, and die. <laughs> and he said, if that is life, then absolutely not. And I also remember, um, probably a lot of you have seen that, um, there, there is an interview that I saw actually a lot on Facebook. It's an interview with Bob, Bob Marley. And it was very short. Someone asked him, uh, do you want to be rich? And he, he said, what do you mean? And the interviewer said, you know, have a lot of money, have a lot of savings in, in your bank account. And he said, you call that rich? <laughs> And really, truly, is that rich to have resource that is limited that's going to define how much happiness you're going to have? Is that the kind of richness we're looking for in this lifetime? This, this world, if anything, is a victimhood place. It's a, vic it's a place that we're gonna play victim. And the best we can get by playing this game is to be the victimizer sometimes and not the victim. And yet it's all a game of victimhood. If I have more money in the bank account, I may not be a victim of the government or a job, but I'm a victim of the limited resource, the numbers in my bank account. I'm still a victim. That's how much I'm entitled to happiness. That's what we're telling ourselves by playing the game of this world. So what is the thing that Jesus wants us to get? in this course. Actually, Jesus said, there is one thing I really, it's the aim of this course. That's to truly know what is giving and what is receiving. 
if it comes down to one thing that we gotta reverse in our mind is the understanding that giving is receiving and nobody can limit the love and the joy and the abundance that we receive except by the limitation we give to ourselves. You know, sometimes people ask me, do you think you're equal to David when we travel together? And I thought the question is probably asking how, whether I receive, perceive myself, receive the same kind of attention or love or acknowledgement. But you know, I, I said, you know, I have absolute equal opportunity to give. That is, that is, I know that. And the kind of joy and love that I experience is completely dependent on that. Do we have equal opportunity to give? Yes. yes. So what is hierarchy? What is the limitation in our bank account? What is rejection? What is loss? The mind that is completely consumed in giving can transcend the belief in sickness and death. The, the mind that perceives sickness and death are the mind that is in the mode of getting. That is what this world is about. Let's play the game of getting. Who gets more and compare? So, what happened um, from that moment when, you know, I really didn't know exactly what it takes to live, to experience a life that is promised by Jesus. It's not a life in form, in linear time. It's a life in this moment. You know, we have a lot of movies and a lot of uh, talks and people in this world talk about, we're here to find happiness. We have movies about, you know, a movie on top of my mind, Hector and the Pursuit of Happiness. Many Hollywood movies, they're making movies about how to achieve happiness. What if we just replace this word happiness with life? Happiness is life. What if we say, what is your goal? My, my goal is to be alive. My goal is to be, to live. And there is a way, and it's very, very simple. It is not, it doesn't take a long, long journey for you to reach that goal. The goal is you can live in this moment if you live with the spirit. And the means and the end are together, meaning if you want to receive the end of living in that eternal life right now, in that joy, in that abundance, then receive the means that's given by the Spirit, which is the guidance in this very moment. The guidance is the end. There is no other purpose in this life. Because the only purpose of being here is to be happy. The only purpose to be here is to find life, which is right here, right now. So in that way, the only purpose is to accept the means. It becomes very, very practical when we talk like that. It's practical because the means, like Rod was talking about this morning, the means is in the form that we can recognize even if we still identify with a separate body. <coughs> Jesus wants to reach us and guide us to this place of abstract light by giving us specific means to bring the mind back. Just come back, just come back. So it's not like 
something so abstract. There is not something that is far in the future. It's in this very moment. That is the good news. That is the good news. It's at our reach. All that it takes is for our mind to be able to say, okay, what is that you have me do now? We don't even have to ask the question, what is the problem? Why do I have this pain? What happened in my mind yesterday that caused this pain today? You don't need to figure out the problem. If you can remember to ask, what now? Just tell me what now. If you know the means and the end are together and are exactly the same, <coughs> then that's the end of the journey. The journey becomes an instant. And that is why this journey is so practical. That is why we say devote your life to it. Because there is no life unless it is devoted to this. You know, other times are spent in distractions until the moment that we recognize, okay, I tried it all and it's not bringing me anything. So what, what does it look like? Um, it looks very, very spontaneous in form. And when we give our mind to a purpose that is irrelevant in terms of form, then the form becomes out of, out of our control. And we, we don't care about the form anymore because we are devoted to this purpose, to this asking, and what it looks can be so different in every moment. Many, many years ago, I, um, I, had a, I woke up one morning from, from a dream that in the dream I was told that I'm to be involved in making a documentary film about, about this amazing message. So I woke up overjoyed and I remember I wrote a letter to David, just sharing the joy. And over about a year after, after that dream, I was asking in my mind, when is that gonna happen? I thought, it's, it's, um, you told me, you know, when is that gonna happen? And one day, um, I was in Canada just taking a walk and I heard, it's done, it's already done. I will send you my team, but you don't have to think about it. I thought, oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> so fast forward to that, from that point, I think it's another maybe four or five years. Last year, um, we started to have different signs and symbols around people coming talking to us about making a movie. You know, because this has been in my mind for so long, I don't really take those signs as like, okay, I would just watch and okay, okay, there's another one, okay. And until this 70-year-old um, award-winning, world-renowned cinematographer who made 130 movies in his life from Portugal said he heard to free his calendar for the whole month of May to come and help us make a movie. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, seems like now is the time when the team is sent <laughs> by Jesus. That was about a year ago and at the same time, around the same time, I was doing a tour in Europe and um, I had an invitation in, from Aarhus, Denmark, the second largest city in, in Denmark. And instead of accepting the invitation, I actually heard, go to Copenhagen. And I thought, I don't know anyone in Copenhagen. There's no invitation. And I don't go anywhere when there is no invitation. But I heard Copenhagen. So we, I posted a message on Facebook and saying, 
I'm open to come to Copenhagen in case there's anyone. <laughs> and this guy responded immediately and saying, I have a center that hasn't been used for a long time. I really want to devote it to A Course in Miracles. Come to my center. So he hosted me and I said, what, what's your, what do you do? He said, I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's coming in next week actually to help make this, this documentary film. And all this time I thought, you know, it's already made. Jesus said it's already made, so I'm just here to, to be open and allow, because that's my life. You know, we have absolutely no goal for a product, no goal for a result in form. What is the, what is the goal is the present connection with the Spirit, to receive and to give. That is the present goal. It's very fun. You know, and then I started to get all kinds of signs. My friend Helena here saying one one day came to me and said, I'm the director's assistant. I said, Okay, great. And she said, I think you're the director. I said, I am. She said, Yeah, I think you are the director. And they start to have all kinds of people telling me, You're the director, you're the director. So only two weeks ago I, I did a search on YouTube. I said, I better find out. So I YouTube, what does a director do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that was on um, April 1st. I thought it was a funny coincidence. I searched, and there was a lot of Hollywood movie makers and stars. And, and after I watched the YouTube, I thought, you're kidding me. you got to be kidding me. This is, I don't really know what, what how. <laughs> and also the, the film, uh, the, the stars, they say, what do you expect from a director? They say, clarity, 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 clarity. That's what they expect from a director. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I better find that letter I wrote to David many, many years ago, if I can still find it, just to see what I wrote on that day when I woke up from my dream. I better go back. And then I found that letter, it was 2011, April 1st. The letter I wrote to David was, I think the reason I received this guidance is because I don't have any I know mind to make it happen. Because I really don't know, and I am up for it. That was a reminder exactly six years ago. So I thought, okay, great. And then I heard Jesus say, now you gotta be ready to download. So from that moment, I thought I haven't really stopped downloading and delivering. Sometimes I thought, do I really only have one mouth to talk? It's the amount of information that comes through is just overwhelming. But this is the kind of life you relinquish any goal, how your day gonna look like, and it's an amazing fun ride. It's an amazing. Susanna just came here 48 hours ago. She's gonna be another assistant part of the team, and she said, you, you know, if anything I can say, your life is not boring. <laughs> it's a lot of action going on, and yet, it's not about the form. It is the eyes that you see through. That, that is what is different. And that is purified through what? Through accepting the means. It's the seven years of non-stopping accepting the means and reminding myself that this is the only goal. This is the only purpose. And with all the people who come to join this film, I know one thing that needs to be consistent is our goal has to be the same. If our goal is forgiveness in this moment, then it's all set for me. It's all set. Let's just listen and follow and see what happens. And the rest is, to, 
It's just a joy ride, really. This is an amazing message. This is the good news. If there is a good news to live, deliver today, I want it to be this. There is eternal life we're cele celebrating now. And it is in the guidance. And we can all live like that right now. So I'm very, very grateful to be able to be used to say all of these words, you know. It's the same. The one that is speaking to you, that is receiving these words, are just a shining light. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for all your participation and all your smiling faces. And I want to just pass it on to, to James. Thank you, wow, what a perfect way, perfect way to lead into our our service.